is up for parole today. Five years ago, Evans was one of the most wanted men in state history, having emerged as the prime suspect in the disappearance of five young women. Evans was eventually apprehended for the crimes only to escape and elude authorities for several months until the night he was arrested for the fatal barroom brawl that would lead to his manslaughter conviction. The evidence necessary to try Evans for the abduction of the five young women proved illusory. The DA's office decided to settle for what it knew it could prove in a court of law, hence the lesser manslaughter conviction. No mention of Evans being the primary suspect in the disappearance and presumed death of the five young women was ever made at his manslaughter trial. But now, on a day when one of the most feared men in the annals of state history might walk after having served only five years in prison for manslaughter, the five families are huddled together outside the courthouse, hoping and praying that the man they believe to be nothing more than a vicious animal is not set free. Hope you get a fair shake today, Colin. Pray hard for it, Sunday. Appreciate that. In my experience, give a man a second chance, usually they rise to the occasion. Well, some politician. Never met one of them, never learned from their mistake. What about you, Officer Reed? Can I count on your support? They pay me to guard you, not to talk to you. Don't mind him, Colin. He got woman trouble. You know how that goes. Yeah. Colin Evans, currently serving 10 to 15 years for involuntary manslaughter. Let the record show you've requested to address the parole board in lieu of your attorney. You may begin. Thank you, sir. I'm not gonna stand here and lie to you, because I'm not very good at that. When I was sentenced, I was angry. I told myself fights like this get out of hand all the time. Accidents happened, and I could have easily been the man that died that night. But as time went by, I realized I was wrong. I shouldn't have been angry. I should have been ashamed. A man had died, and there was no way I could bring it back. But I could make a change within myself and others, perhaps. I started a teaching program, teaching other prisoners to read and write. And the warden saw this, and they're talking about taking my program statewide to other prisons. I feel like that's an achievement. I stand here right now as a changed, humble man. I've been in a prison correctional system for five years now, and that is exactly what I am. Corrected, rehabilitated. I just want you to give me a chance. I won't let you down. Thank you for your time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could have just a moment. You see, I did my homework on this man. And I can tell you with confidence that he's actually quite a good liar. That fight that got out of hand, that was actually Mr. Evans flying into a murderous rage because of how the victim was looking at his girlfriend. And as a younger man, there were other acts of violence frequently involving the attentions of a woman. Mr. Evans fits the criteria of a malignant narcissist. Charming, highly intelligent as you've witnessed. But malignant narcissists are compelled to prove their superiority. Everything's a seduction. And if they're rejected or things don't go their way, they lose control. Some other more well-known malignant narcissists were Jeffrey Dahmer, John Wayne Gacy, and Hold on. Uh, no, please, Mr. Sir, Sir. Mr. Evans, please just sit down. Please sit down, Mr. Evans. I can tell you there's violence in this man, and his control over himself is slender. I'll let my fellow board members make up their own minds, but there are five families outside who are hoping and praying that we do not set Colin Evans free. 
Mr. Evans, as I'm sure you're aware, to be granted parole in the state of Tennessee, it must be a unanimous vote. We'll take this up again in five years as mandated. Ladies and gentlemen, that convenes the state of Tennessee parole hearings for today. Madam Secretary, you can turn off your recording devices. Ladies and gentlemen, you're free to go ahead and stop. There's a storm coming. Is everything going to be okay out there? Well, I covered uh, the concrete with plastic. It'll delay the dry time Ryan, a little, but nothing Ryan, paint Mommy a about. picture. Please, go, go, make me a picture. Go ahead, come on. Go get your coloring book. With okay. the storm coming, there's really not much we can do. Hey, Javier. How's this looking great? It's getting there. Hey, have a good weekend. You too. All right, let's go, guys. Load it up. Harry! Hey! Hey! Oh. When are they going to be done? Ah, oh, last month. Ooh, maybe I should remodel. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the prettiest goddaughter in the whole world? Yeah. Oh, and who's Meg's best friend? Ryan. Who's Ryan's best friend? Ryan. And what's on the list? Bullshit! Meg. Yeah, you're going to school the first time she gets called to the principal's office, not me. What's he look like? And is he single? You are a mess, but you look good. Thanks. So do you. Yeah, covered in spit up and carrying an extra 10 pounds, but thanks. You know what I think? I think you're not the reason you feel bad about yourself. I think that Jeffrey should be making you feel appreciated. Meg, and he Meg. should. Jeffrey makes me feel appreciated, okay? He appreciates me. I'm just saying. Thanks for your concern. Okay. Daddy! Daddy! Hey, sweetheart. Jeffrey's home early. Oh, I forgot to tell you. This is Dad's birthday, so he's taking him on a golf trip. Okay, you know what? We're gonna have girls tonight. Mm. I'm gonna get some wine. Great. My girl needs a girl's night. We're gonna get started! <laughs> 